in the journey of love and companionship expressing sexual desires is as important as expressing love and affection yet it is a topic that most of us dread to talk about it is like a dance it requires grace understanding and most importantly respect so let's dive into this together We're treating a very personal and I would say intimate topic um, and that's why I have a special guest here and we are going to be delving into this together so that we can have both the female and the male perspective. Please note that we are both Ghanaian and so we'll be talking from our Ghanaian and cultural personal perspective. How do you express sexual desires in a relationship? okay so first of all we need to understand that the way the or the way men think the way men behave is mm -hmm. totally different i do remember this book um, men are from mars and um, women, women are, are from, from venus yeah. yes it it talks about the difference between men and women and even among the men we have difference uh between differences with men mm -hmm. why because of the environment because of culture mm -hmm. because of uh, faith mm -hmm. so the way we think the way we see the way we approach things are different because a lot of faith actually do not talk mm -hmm. especially when it comes to things pertaining to intimacy mm -hmm. so for me a christian mm -hmm. and also an, um, uh, an african and also a Ghanaian the way we express intimacy it's not by just public show off but rather we tend to do everything hidden hardly would you see most Ghanaians men in quote kissing their wife outside hardly yeah that's because true. of the culture certain things has been imprinted in the mind of Ghanaian men mm. So it will be a little bit awkward, especially when you see a Ghanaian, a typical Ghanaian man in the Ghanaian society coming out to even hug the wife and kiss the wife. Yeah, we hardly see that, um, except that, of course, these days. Um... Because of uh, exposure, because of uh, social media and the rest, mm -hmm. we are trying to adapt by a typical Ghanaian man. They might not do that outside. Might not do that. Yes. So normally what they tend to do is they are ready to go. <laughs> but then for persons in a relationship, you need to be able to express your special desires. We know that communication, mm -hmm. for instance, is one of the main things for a relationship to excel. So with our cultural background and the way we have been trained, of course, each family also differs. Mm -hmm. Um sex is not something that is discussed publicly no, it's a tabu. every other thing but we don't talk about even that. in in even in christianity especially those from the i, I would say from from africa mm -hmm. the way we even talk about intimacy it's it's some way we see it as ungodly we see it as a taboo for even a man of God to stand before the pulpit to talk or teach about intimacy. It is now that things are actually changing. changing. And I wonder the impact it has had on individuals in a relationship because then if you don't talk about it, how do you have a satisfying sexual life? Yeah, yeah, that is very true. But one thing that we also need to understand is that if you don't teach someone or give someone an information a person will try to get the information from somewhere mm -hmm. so we have a lot of people who have in quotes ways that they think will help their sexual intimacy life so they try to gather information through books through social media and a lot of people are getting wrong information mm -hmm. so if we were to give the children the right information if men of god if if leaders as uh, parents 
give the children right information. Do not go outside to look for information that in the end, it will affect them. Because a lot of people, uh, because of this telenovela, the way they see it's acting, they want their relationship, their intimate, their intimacy to be like that. Based on the Western culture and things that we mm -hmm. portray through movies and books, we tend to want to act that way and we think that's the best way to express our sexual desires to our partner. But then, typically, typically, mm -hmm. Um, looking at it from a gendered perspective, would you say that men are more expressive of their sexual desires than women, or vice versa? Hmm. I think I think with that, so women, women, women are much better than men. I think we are better in a lot of things when yeah, it comes to men, expressing women, ourselves. Women, I think better. Because with a woman, they'll try to ensure that the mood, the environment, everything is soothing to them. Mm -hmm. But a man is always ready to go. Mm -hmm. Men, we are staying now. We are staying now. I think those that will understand. <laughs> I've seen women, when God created them, it was in Tena. That thing was in Tena. And so before a woman can get. Um, psychologically mentally physically prepared she needs to go through a whole lot of process mm -hmm. but for us we are ready to go we are ready to shoot the gun is always ready we can shoot at any time provided 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 we have we have the go ahead we can shoot so um men are always ready mm -hmm. however as a man, I believe that uh, it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, right now, there are certain laws whereby when you forcefully sleep with your wife, it is seen as rape and you can be charged for it. Right. So I do believe that we need to be careful. We need to communicate. We need to ensure that we understand each other, set mm -hmm. the atmosphere right. Mm -hmm. We need to ensure that we understand, we need to prepare our mind towards it. Maybe sometimes you a man, you are always ready to go. If you would want to be intimate, right now I'm just bringing it down to intimacy as in sex. sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you would want to have sex with your wife or with your partner during the night, set the atmosphere in the morning. Set the atmosphere in the morning. How do you set the atmosphere? One, you need to let the woman know in advance. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. In the morning. Oh, sweetie, tonight, uh, uh, this is going to rock <laughs> tonight. You are setting her mind because it takes a long time for a woman to process things. Mm -hmm. Honey, tonight is going to be wonderful. Tonight I've prepared myself. Mm -hmm. Tonight I've prepared my gun. I'm going to shoot. I've targeted something and I'm going to shoot. So you need to you need to prepare her mind in in in, in a jovial manner. It shouldn't be that serious. When you are coming, when you close and you are coming, there are certain things you can actually get her a gift. Because women, they have they have this thing that they love surprises. Mm -hmm. One thing that will make the person smile, that will kickstart the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You get home, honey. Ah, I'm so tired. Um, I'm going to take a shower. Do you want to join me? Yeah, yeah. creating the atmosphere. You get into the shower room. You can be teasing each other. You can teach, tease each other, rub each other's back. You are creating the atmosphere. You are preparing her. It's not like we, the African men, that anytime. We want it, we just go, whether the woman is ready or not. 
it just yeah. go and shoot. Thank you for mentioning that part, whether the woman is ready or not. And sometimes we are not ready. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the atmosphere is set and everything, but still um, psychologically, mm -hmm. we are still not ready. Um, and as an African woman, I'm talking from a personal, very personal perspective. I have, my mind has been wired to always be available for my partner, especially for those who have been married. Our mind have been wired to be available always sexually for your husband at any time because it's your marital responsibility to your husband and you should always be available whenever your husband needs you. So it means that a lot of us women are found in a situation that even when we are not um, sexually ignited, if I can put it that way, mm -hmm. because of that cultural conditioning, we still make ourselves available anyway. It mm -hmm. means that there's no satisfaction or it means that you're not enjoying the process. It means that your mind and your whole body is not in it. So in that kind of situation, um, how do you as a woman express this to your partner i mean personally this has been a difficult challenge for me as an individual to although i try as much as possible to, to be expressive i try as much as possible to show that um this is the way i feel even though sometimes i don't say it that mm. this is the way i feel so when i find myself in that kind of situation where regardless of the mood and everything atmosphere that has been set aright I still am not in the mood and I feel like telling my partner I'm not in the mood because of my cultural conditioning will, will, will be somehow, it will sound somehow because um, I'm not supposed to say that, mm. ideally. Mm -hmm. So in that situation. For me, I, I do think that there are many ways of communicating, mm -hmm. okay? Communicating. Yes, of course, the atmosphere and everything uh, is set, mm. but mentally you're not prepared. Yeah. Do you get it? Yes. Uh, one thing, one advice I do remember that um, uh, one of my fathers in the Lord, Bishop Emmanuel Ekeokutechi, he was advising my sister when she was getting married. He said, remember that marriage, as you are going into marriage, you are going to survive. Mm -hmm marriage is survival so i was wondering how can you survive in a marriage mm -hmm. he said it's not everything that as you expect you get or your expectation will be met mm -hmm. sometimes you you have to put yourself at a disadvantage to be an advantage to make your family happy mm -hmm. however not saying that you should condone or should accept everything that comes mm. because we need to strike the balance, the balance. there. Do you get it? Mm. Yes, of course. Uh, intimacy, as we started to talk about, intimacy is not all about sex. Mm. Do you get it? Sometimes, what the man actually needs, yes, he feels like he needs sex, mm -hmm. but sometimes you just teasing him will bring him to a position that he's okay okay do you get it you you just preparing um i've read i've read extensively concerning this kind of things and uh we have some things we normally call for play mm -hmm. i'm talking i'm sure people will be wondering ah this this man <laughs> Be careful though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we need to we need to we need to ask Christians. Okay. There are certain things that we need to know and we need to teach in the right way because the world has taken it and they've uh, placed the information wrongly. Mm. It is up to Christians to take it and put it the right way to help other Christians to help the world. Right. So we have foreplay. Mm -hmm. Foreplay is not a wrong thing. It is not unbiblical. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? It's between you and your wife. Right. So what you would have to do is there are 
certain things that you can do as i said men are still out so once you do that the foreplay and the rest the man can be satisfied without you even having to do the do okay that is from my perspective mm -hmm. but we have instances okay whereby the foreplay does not work mm -hmm. then as uh, my one of my father in the law said you have to survive meaning that you need to take it on mm -hmm. do you get this and you woman if if that if it does not you also need to position and mentally try as much as possible to get into it because i'm sure that there has been instances whereby you were not prepared mm -hmm. mentally by the end you were okay you were satisfied oh yeah so, so <laughs> that's one yeah yeah because sometimes in the morning i don't feel like going to work but i still have to go mm -hmm. when i get there and i'm coming i just get this fulfillment that oh i'm okay mm -hmm. i'm not saying it always happens sometimes it does sometimes not i hope at least i was able to answer that question yeah of course and that means that you cannot always 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 be comfortable the relationship is about two of you somebody's discomfort will make the other person comfortable at times and sometimes both of you become comfortable and most importantly just express your feelings women we have different ways of expressing our feelings know your partner very well i mean sometimes just looking at your partner's face you can tell um their readiness and their state their mental state by just looking at them and for women let's try we we are expressive about every other thing mm -hmm. you know every other thing our look um our hairstyle a lot of things but when it comes to sexual desires especially when you're with partner your partner i think you should not just express it by your demeanor you should voice it out too if you cannot talk about it with your partner then who else can you talk about it with i mean letting them know how you feel at that particular time whether you're in the mood or not i mean of course know how to say it know who your partner is and best time to communicate it and i think you're good right yes yes and just to add to to what you just said mm. especially the christian women the christian ladies what that are married done? i beg you stop wearing underwear no in ghana we have we have some terms we tend to use like uh uh or your meaning that you see a wife and the way the person the wife is dressed as a man even if your mind is tuned you are prepared the moment you see her appearance oh you start blowing tongues that atmosphere will leave why is it that most at times christian marriages fail and majority has to do with intimacy it's because most of the ladies they pray diaspritos but they don't know how to manage their home in the house you are with your husband alone create the atmosphere there are certain dresses that you can wear in door yeah. in door not outdoor to entice him to tease him imagine that you come as a man you come to the house you are very very tired from work and your wife has prepared herself mentally physically emotionally and she's just bypassing you. Maybe you're watching uh, soccer. Then she'll bypass you. She'll bend. And you are beginning to see visions. Young men will see visions. See visions. Seeing visions. Different kinds of visions. And one thing that also moves as a lot is our sight. Mm -hmm. Maybe there might be people you might have seen. But when you come home and you begin to see these real visions that you can touch. Mm -hmm. Because these visions you've already uh, paid or you've gone through the right process. Mm -hmm. It pulls your attention towards that vision. You write down the vision. Mm -hmm. Make so it plain. Make it plain so that the one who is pursuing it will pursue it. Mm -hmm. 
So as a man, we perceive what we've seen because it has been made plain. Christian ladies, stop those covering. You need to uncover. Uncover. Uncover certain things. When you were alone in the, in the room, it is not always that you have to uh, to do uh, all fall down. What's all fall down? Uh, that was a movie I once watched whereby the, the, in terms of sex, you can see that the woman is always lying down. Ah. Yes. Sometimes it's you too. We do not say you should go and do things that are awkward, please. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I'm striking the balance. Try certain things. Try new style. You can create your own style. Right. Try new things. The one that, that works for you. Okay. Stick to it. Stick to it. Or you can actually surprise your partner with something new because you don't know what is next because as i said everyone loves surprises yeah everybody does so if you surprise me today or tomorrow with something new i will expect oh, okay let me try so be very careful with this okay and remember <laughs> one pastor said even before they do they do you need to pray pray so that the angels will make the atmosphere ready for you. Oh, really? Ah, that was what the pastor advised to do. They do. <laughs> I think that you know your partner best. So if prayer, prayer helps in a lot of things, yeah? Mm -hmm. it, prayer helps in everything. Mm -hmm. So if setting the atmosphere by first of all praying would help, why not? Mm -hmm. Do it. Yep. Do it. Because, yeah. Do yeah. it. Don't do it always at one place. Not always at the bedroom. The kitchen is there. The hall is there. The hall is there. The couch. The couch is there. The bathroom. The bathroom is there. Ah, so you see, everywhere is there. There are lots the of room. Is everywhere. Yeah. It's for you. Do it. Be intimate. So, make your, yourself desirable. Mm. Make yourself desirable to your partner as a woman. And as a man, so of course, make yourself desirable to your partner. I got a lot of questions from some of my videos that I posted earlier. People asking about sex and all of that. And I was not able to individually um, answer these questions as I got them in my inbox. So I hope that having this conversation, especially together, um, would be able to shed some light to some extent. Speaking from our own personal and cultural mm -hmm. um, perspective so if you do have any question or something else you'd want us to touch on you're free to dm me as usual and drop a comment so that we can touch on them drop the comments over there is it here or there <laughs> it's one of them yeah so yeah so here or here all of them goes is it miles Monroe that said that men are wired for sex yeah make yourself desirable always to your partner mm. especially if you're married if you're not married please don't make yourself desirable to your partner if you're married make yourself desirable to your partner always remember yes. that men regardless of how spiritual they are are moved by the things they see when you mm. starve a man sexually continuously you might not like the end result don't say that he's a christian and so no matter what because of his godly principles he would not go out just by looking mm -hmm. you know can make a man lustful because it can begin to you know establish a lot of lustful thoughts in their mind so you want to be very careful that you are not pushing your beloved out mm -hmm. into the hands of readily available women yeah then also to just to add to what you said come in your conclusion Please, single ladies and men, do not go and test drive, especially the ladies. Have you ever seen the most expensive cars being test driven by normal people? So the way you value or put value on yourself will determine the kind of people you attract. Right. If you go and everyone keeps on just driving you it's going to affect you in the long run mm -hmm. because maybe a who was who drove you 
who drove you smoothly. B, who drove you, drove you roughly because the terrain was very rough. C, who was driving you, tend to have driven you halfway. Mm -hmm. You've gone through all this, uh, this experience. It will imprint in your mind. Mm -hmm. And this can also affect your future. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of women are married now, but they are still yearning, lusting for their exes. Mm -hmm. We need to be very careful. So take a deep breath, hold your partner's hands, look them in the eye and let the dance begin. Remember, it is not just about expressing desires, but about listening, understanding and respecting your partner's desires too. You know there's no way I'm, I'm going to leave you to go without sharing a scripture with you. So today I'm sharing with you 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 4. The message translation, I love this so much. Listen to what he has to say. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. If you love this video, please give it a thumbs up. Turn on the notification bell so that you will not miss any other video. And make sure you're sharing this video with a friend. Till I see you again next week, it's a goodbye.